Welcome to the Canoga Park Youth Art Center's new series, World Art, where each class we go to a different part of the world and we learn about their culture, their architecture, their art. And today we're going to France, but just not anywhere in France. We're going to the caves of La Coy. Let me show you what we're doing today. Now, this is a very famous site in France where ancient Paintings are done on the walls. They're 17,000 years old. Yes, you heard me correctly, 17,000 years old. So here are some of the types of things they would put on their drawings, and I'll show you some in a little bit. Here we are showing some, some potential dinner running across the front yard where some people live, a river. It's kind of like a map to explain to somebody, hey, this is where I'm from, because at this point, language wasn't as good as it is with us now. Let's take a look at some of the actual pictures. First, let's see where this place is. Here's a map of France, and that is where these caves were discovered, and how they were discovered is so peculiar. A man was walking his dog. His dog's name was Robot, and his dog fell into a hole. And he was a teenager, the dog's owner was a teenager, and a couple of him, him and a couple of his friends decided to investigate it. And they went down the shaft and this giant cave emerged. So they were actually the first ones, well, actually Robot should get the credit for discovering this amazing archaeological find. Let's take a look at some of these animals. Look at these paintings. Now, it's not like they had a Michael's Craft Store they could go to, right, to make these marks. So oftentimes they would use what they could find around them rocks and minerals. If a rock has a lot of iron in it, it's going to give you a red color. If rock has a lot of ochre in it, it's going to give you a yellow color. And they used the, the charcoal from the fires they were burning for the black. And sometimes if you're lucky, you can find chalk in rocks and you can grind that up and use that as paint. But the drawings and the paintings, they're just stunning. Now if we go down to this one, this one shows like an action picture of what these guys are doing. They're showing that, hey, there's plenty of, of game around here, and this is how we hunt, and this is the type of animals. All the pictures that they found here were of the local animals and the local trees that were around that many years ago. Let's go up here and take a look at this beautiful painting. So you can see horses. And you can see this beautiful steer. Look at how graceful that's painted. And it's very realistic. They really used their powers of observation and created these sophisticated paintings of the life that they saw all around them. Now, it's important we understand the scale, how big these are. So I want to show you this picture. Here's the dude standing, and look at Look at how huge they are. They just, there's over 600 of these drawings. Not only that, shortly after it was discovered, so many people, up to 1,200 a day, were going to look at these that the oxidation and the atmosphere was starting to ruin these cave drawings, and they had to close it back up again. So they recreated not one, not two, but five exact replicas in a museum where people could go and get the same experience. Here's another thing that they used to do, these handprints, all these handprints. Sometimes they would put their hand down and paint around it. Other times they would put paint on their hand and then hit the wall with their painted hand. So there's a positive way of doing it and a negative. The positive is when you put paint on your hand and leave a handprint. The negative is when you put your hand on the wall and paint all around it. That way there's no paint for your hand is. Let's take another look at my drawing. Now, yours can be as different as you want, right? Because I live in one neighborhood thousands of years ago. You may have lived in a different neighborhood. The idea is that you want to go back in time and put yourself in the, in the mind of somebody who was here way earlier, like just after the dinosaurs earlier. So I want to communicate to somebody where I live and what the land is like. So I need to show them there's a river here. So you can put your river anywhere you want. Maybe it's going to be a lake or a pond or even the ocean. And so I'm kind of drawing a map here. I'm showing them this is what I eat and this is what I eat. This place has fish and here's a little place where our village is and there's a path that goes all the way around 
and then here is a cave where maybe their neighbors live. And over here, I put some bushes with berries growing in them. So if you were living in ancient times and you stumbled upon this, you would know as much about your environment as we do now when we Google a location. It's got all the pictures, it's got the directions, it's like an encyclopedia about how to find dinner, how to find shelter, kind of like what we do today. So let's make one of these drawings, shall we? Now I know that in most of our pictures I always talk to you about a horizon line, but in this case there is no horizon line. We're going to treat it like we're looking down at a flat map, and there's no horizon lines on a map. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in my river. Remember, rivers are irregular. You can draw your river any way you want. So here's our river, and now I want to show that it's a river. So if I put these additional wavy lines in here, the people who see it are going to know it's a river and not a road. Now it looks more like a river. Now I'm going to draw my little huts. This is my little village on the side. Simple square, and I'm going to put like little things to show it's made out of, out of some sort of palms or plant fiber. And now we got a little roof. Now, I'm pretty sure these guys lived in the caves, but maybe they had neighbors who had a little bit more of a house thing going on. So you can see I'm just making them look kind of rough, making sure everyone's got a door, maybe a window. Let's put another one in here, simple square. Plant, 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 door, and our roof. All right, so here's our little village. Now we're going to come up here, and you guys can do this any way you want. Your part of town looks different than my part of town. We're going to make a couple of rocks. Now remember, rocks like trees, no two are the same. Really irregular, and maybe here's the cave entrance, and I can color that in to show that it goes in dark. Now here is my lake. Again, it's not just a circle. I made it kind of funny looking. I want to show that there's fish in here. And yeah, you can do those really simple fish if you want. Put a little fin on them, fin on them, eyeball, eyeball. Now we also want to show this is water. So we're going to put some wavy lines in here to show that this is water. Remember, you got to remember, if you didn't have a language, how would you communicate? Well, you would probably communicate through pictures, right? So if I'm going to tell somebody, hey, you got to go to the lake that's by the trees. It has the best fishing. But I don't have words to say that. So how am I going to do it? I am going to draw the type of pine trees that I know are by the pond that has the best fishing. So that way, I don't need any words. I can use my pictures. All right, so now we're going to put a little pathway in. Let's have our little pathway go from our guys here. He's going to cross the river. La, 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 la. And maybe we can show some rocks in here where they use the rocks to step across the river. Our pathway comes around here, goes around our pond, goes by the trees, and winds up back at the river again where we found these blueberry bushes. There we go. My tree's in the way here, but I'll move him later. So let's put some bushes in here. And then we got our blueberries in here because you need your vegetables too. I'm going to put another bush in here. There we go. All right. Now, I don't think you think I'm free leaving the animals to last because they're the hardest. They're not. I'm going to show you how to draw running deer really easy. It's a rectangle. Okay. And now we got to put a little tail, round up his butt a little bit. Now these legs, they just come out like that. And the front legs, they just come out like that. And then I got my neck. I put a little oval on my neck, give him some antlers, and away we go. He's got a friend, so let's give him his friend. I'm going to run out of paper, but that's okay. Here's his friend, rectangle, tail, one leg that goes off my paper. The other legs come out here, his neck comes up, his nose is there, and then his antlers come up like that. So it's really just rectangles, bent rectangles, curved rectangles, and an oval. That's all it is. Now, these guys are lucky and they've got a couple little goats or horses too. Same thing. 
We're going to make a little bit of an oval body, put some legs on it, put a neck on it, and put a little head on it. Maybe they're alpacas. Those are like a type of sheep that you can get the wool off of and make clothing out of. There we go. And there's our other guy. Let's make one face in the other way. There's his head. And there's his legs. All right. Let's see. Do I have everything in here? Oh, some grasses. So we're going to put some grasses in here just to fill it up because if you, you need to know if you're going to plant anything where there's some flat land that things grow. So here's our flat land where they'd be able to put in a vegetable garden if they wanted to. There you go. So this is my hometown. This is our village. These are my animals that I keep. These are the natural ones that run around that help me feed my family. Here's my river. Here's where I get my fish and my fruit. And here's my neighbor way over there. Now you could color this in with pencil, or as I'll show you in a little bit, you can color it in with other things. Language is very important, and words are very important, but so are pictures. And oftentimes, for me personally, I communicate my ideas through pictures and my artwork. So this is kind of a project to help you communicate a, an idea using pictures, like what your neighborhood looks like. Well, I did a little bit of an upgrade, and I'll tell you what I did on this. I took some chalk, and you guys can use sidewalk chalk if you want, and I put a few colors in, and I just kind of scribbled a few colors in, and then I took a piece of tissue paper, and I blended it all together. So now it looks a little bit like the cave wall. And then I took oil pastel, which draws over chalk quite nicely, and I went and I added my color. So I did the same type of a drawing, only this time I added color, and it's all on this kind of background. Another piece, type of paper you could use would be like that brown butcher paper. That would be great to indicate a cave wall too. So we went to France today. Wow! And we got to see something that was 17,000 years old. Thank you for joining us at the Canoga Park Youth Arts Center's World Art Class. We'll have another destination for you next time. Thank you.